Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be covering the Advanced Administrator Certification. We're going to be looking at what the prerequisites are, what the exam covers, and what are some great study materials for the exam. I am 2x cert Salesforce certified myself. I have my Salesforce Administrator Certification and Platform App Builder Certification. But if you haven't done so already, Please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I drop new Salesforce content each week and I would really appreciate it. All right, without further ado, we're just gonna jump straight in. So we're on the website here and we're looking at the advanced admin. It talks a little bit about the exam here. So candidates should have experience using the advanced administrator capabilities in Salesforce and be proficient at designing advanced reports, dashboard and uh, dashboards and automation processes. Automation process is what's that? Workflow, flow, process builder. And you do need the prerequisite. You need to have your Salesforce admin certification before you sit for this exam. Most likely, if you are watching this video, you probably already are admin certified, which is great. Congratulations. If not, then you will need to get your admin certification before you sit for this exam. And I have made a video talking talking about my experience taking the exam and offered my advice on how to study that for that. So just check out my video on my channel for that. And the link in for that video is in the description. Um, down here we have study and prepare. We have prepare for your Salesforce admin certification credential trails mix which I actually have opened up here. So it's prepared um, by Salesforce. Uh, you know, as you can scroll down, there's an exam overview guide here with some links, prerequisite for the Salesforce admin. And then you can start working through like pick, miss, pick list administration and enhanced transition, or excuse me, enhanced transaction security, session-based permission sets and security. Um, but yeah, this is the trail mix. There's a lot of great material here. So I would highly recommend, especially if you're if you're not already working uh, with Salesforce at a company or doing consulting, then you need to get as much hands-on experience as you can. And following this trail mix is a great way to do so. And if you complete all these, you get 38,000 uh, points, which is kind of crazy. That's a lot of points. Um, over here on the top, they do offer the exam guide, which I do have open here. And all the links for these uh, websites I'm showing you are in the description of the video. So please take the time to look at them and go more in depth. Um, I'm just kind of doing a high level overview here. So looking at the uh, exam guide here, it has a content section at the top. And then it goes in talking about uh, these uh, exam and the program. So it's designed for individuals who have the expertise of seasoned Salesforce admin and encompasses the breadth of applications, the features, functions available to end users, and the advanced configuration, management, and application extending options available to admins across the platform. So there's two certifications within the Salesforce Certified Administrator Program. The first is the Certified Admin, which focuses on the features and functionality used to maintain a Salesforce implementation. And second is the Advanced Admin. This credential is targeted towards the Salesforce Certified Admin who has become proficient in Salesforce configuration, maintenance, and so on. So it kind of goes into more of the audience description. <clears throat> And it talks about what the candidate should be able to do right here. So create custom objects and define the appropriate relationship types, uh, create flow, workflow, approval processes, and formula fields to automate complex business processes. That's what I just said a minute ago. But right here is kind of the meat and potatoes of uh, the video here, right? We're going to look at about the exam. So it's 60 multiple choice questions. And there's five non-scored, so 65 questions. Time allotted is 105 minutes. That's the same as other exams. Passing score is 65%. $200 to take the exam, $100 retake fee. You can do it online proctored, or you can go to a physical location to take an exam. Both my exams I did online proctored. I would highly recommend it. You can do it in the comfort of your own home. It's relatively easy to set up. And you don't have to drive and get ready to go somewhere. And I don't know about you guys, I don't want to get up and go take an exam. I'd rather just stay at home and be able to do it. However, you will need your admin certification for this. And they even put that in the prerequisite. Goes on to talk about how to take the exam. You guys can read through this. 
Uh, this is about the on on site and then the online protocol for that. And they offer some uh, recommended training resources. So you have your trail mix, uh, trail mix that we've already looked at. There's also some links for super badges they would recommend. Um, I have a feeling some of these may already be in the trail mix, but check these out if they're not. There would be great as well. And then the uh, courses recommended for this exam include, and they have the um, them listed here. So here's the exam outline. So let's take a look at exactly what this exam covers and the percentages. So starting us off here is security and access at 20%. That covers, uh, you know, giving a scenario to determine the implica 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 <laughs> determine the implications to record and uh, to record and field access. Oh my gosh, let me redo that. <clears throat> Given a scenario, determine the implications to record and field data access, the sharing model, control by parent, grant, grant access by hierarchies, and so forth. Compare and contrast the capabilities of custom profiles, permission sets, and delegated admin. So really, it's this looking at how you control access to the records. Um, in the regular admin exam, you do go into a little bit of depth about the access granted by hierarchies, uh, I know in the platform app builder, it is very heavy on setting up um, different new objects and custom objects and how you control that access. Way, it's way heavier than the admin certification. So if you already have the platform app builder certification, I feel like this will be a breeze for you. You've already covered a 99% of this. I feel like it's just brushing up on it and uh, making sure you understand it fully. That's twenty percent. That appears to tie for the second highest. Uh, yeah, it ties for the highest amount uh, down for the uh, section here. So that's a very important section. Then nineteen percent, the objects and applications. So given a scenario, determine the appropriate solution to enhance and extend objects. So your master detail lookup junction, related list record type schema builder, and object creator. Yeah, that's it's very important. And then it talks about Lightning App Builder. Again, if you've done your App Builder certification, this is all covered in here. Nothing new there. If you have that certification, you touch on it in the regular admin. But I will say, uh, especially in the App Builder, you're going to want to know how these objects relate to each other. What's the implications of trying to change these object? Maybe you're trying to change from a master detail to a lookup. Is that even possible? Um you, what are the capabilities of schema builder? I know some of the questions are, are around uh, if your you know schema builder looks confusing, are you able to collapse sections? Are you able to search? Uh, this little nuances there is important. So you're going to want to look into that, especially this being 19%, another big section you're going to want to know. Now looking here is the second smallest section, auditing and monitoring. So given a scenario, determine the appropriate tools for monitoring and troubleshooting system activities. So your debug log, your setup, and your audit trail. Explain how to ensure sensitive data is set up to support business, legal, compliance, use cases, and production and sandboxes. And then uh, explain how to review and troubleshoot security settings, including pending updates that may change system access. You know, this is a small percentage. Um, if I was going to go in here and tackle the exam, obviously this is important. You need to know how to get to your debug log, how to read it, um, and also how to set up audit trail. Obviously those are important, and these two points are important as well, but it's only 10% of the grade. I would really focus on the bigger sections if I was studying for this, um, but uh, obviously you can do whatever you would like. Looking at cloud applications, 11%. Describe the features of Salesforce, which enable sales users to conduct the sales process, including product, price, book schedules, orders, and quotes. Explain how to create and maintain entitlements uh, and entitlement processes. Given a scenario, understand the standard Salesforce suite of products that extend capabilities, uh, extend the core platform. Excuse me. So it even has like chat, case feed, service console in here as well. Yeah, this is a, another small section, uh, but it is, it's is—it's going to be an important section. In the platform app builder, it doesn't cover it, a lot of this as much. Uh, it does cover chatter a lot. So uh, this may be a section you need to really brush up on, even if you have your admin certification. Uh, very important uh, section here. 13% data analytics and management. 
Explain the tools and best practices for accessing, improving, and enriching data quality. So what? Validation rules, duplicate rules, archiving, uh, data types. Huge. Yeah, I would say, I don't know for a fact on this exam, but you need to understand how the duplicate rule is set up. You know, uh, I just put out a video on setting up duplicate rules. I think I, if I remember correctly, there's two that I set up during that video. Please go check that video out. It's a great video. Um, I've thought about creating a second duplicate rule video to look at more scenarios. Um, you need to understand how to set them up. What are, like what kind of like what is it looking for whenever you set these duplicate rules up? So it's important. They always ask these questions on the exams and they can be tricky, especially the way they word them. <clears throat> Understanding methods to connect to access, backup, restore and archive data, data outside the Salesforce platform, big objects, data warehouse, how, or, uh, data warehouse, external objects, data lakes, third party solutions and Salesforce connect. Given a scenario, identify the appropriate tools and methods for importing data into Salesforce. I feel like in the admin exam, they do a good job of quizzing you on how to use data import wizard, data loader, um, how you set up your external IDs. So brush up on that. They're going to quiz you on it. You already know. So those are big points. So just, you know, looking at this section, you should already know this, especially if you have your admin exam, excuse me, admin certification, you're going to know your your validation, managing duplicate rules, um, but just brush up on that. This is an important section. So 7%, the smallest amount. Environment management and deployment describe the options available to move metadata between environments. So change sets, sandboxes, app exchange, managed and unmanaged uh, packages. Describe the capabilities of best practices for uh, using change sets to move metadata between environments. It's a very small percentage at 7%, so it's easy to look at this and kind of skip over it when you're studying, but this is like an easy seven points in my opinion. As an admin, you've already know, understand how chain sets work, but um, I know in the app builder certification, this is really a, an important section. It is a bigger percentage and they quiz you pretty hard on it. So if you already have your app builder certification, you should get all seven points here. No, no doubt. You really should. But <clears throat> I think this section has a great real world real world um, application to it, especially using chain sets. We use that all the time in my job. And whenever you're first using the chain sets, it can be very confusing, especially like understanding, you know, like some of the basic questions is, you know, if a chain set, you know, fails validation, does everything get rolled back or is only the, th the thing that failed uh, get rolled back? Um, as you know, everything gets rolled back. So that's like key things to know. And then what kind of sandboxes there are, what the limitations are. But yeah, study that. It could be an easy seven points. I wouldn't spend too much time studying it though, to be honest, because the other sections are worth so much. And then process automation. It's going to be your flow. It's going to be your valid, uh, excuse me, flow, process builder, workflow. So, you know, given a complex scenario, determine the solution using the best tools or combination of tools to solve a business problem. Given a scenario, identify the appropriate tool or method for troubleshooting declarative automation. So my opinion, flow is the, the big thing with Salesforce now. Workflow rules and process builder is going away. We already know in winter 23 that we're not going to be able to create new workflow rules. They, they're going to live out there. You're existing. And I know that eventually they're all, they're both going to go away based on what Salesforce has told us. And, um, they're, they're going to quiz you on flows, but what I experienced and this is my one gripe with the app builder certification exam is they still quiz you pretty hard on creating new workflow rules in that exam. And I feel like it's a little outdated in my opinion, because we're not going to be creating new workflow rules soon, but, um, as an admin, you yeah, it's getting your admin certification. You've already had to do this. So this is just a, another easy 20 points you could get here. I think uh, just understanding your automation processes and rules. What, what can a workflow rule do? Can it send an outbound message? Does it just, can it send an email? Can it trigger a uh, approval process? Like little questions like that. They're going to try to get you on uh, flow builder. Um, you know, what is a screen flow? Um, 
can a record trigger flow do X, Y, Z? You know, little things like that, they're going to push you on. So you're going to want to make sure you understand that as well. So that covers the exam outline section here. And then you just have your exam code of conduct um, and then how to maintain your Salesforce certification, which you probably already know how to do that. Uh, I would recommend using Focus on Force to study for my exam. I have used Focus on Force for both of my exams. And this is the website here it's for the advanced admin certification. It has a little bit about the exam here, the key facts. It has everything broken out, the advanced admin topic, waiting chart. So as you can see, security and access and process automation are your 20 percenters. And they're sitting at the top of the waiting chart. And you can see down here where the lightest section is. Uh, but yeah, it goes into talking about each section on here. So please take the time and go on Focus on Force. Check this out. I highly recommend using this to study. It is a great study material. They have plenty of practice exams for you to take. I personally love the uh, exam. Um, I think they call it the exam, like key bank, key like keyboard bank. Basically, it's randomized exam, twenty questions. You take it and you retake it, and it grabs twenty more questions that are random. So that way, I I have the ability to just like take exam one and then kind of memorize some of the questions and be able to do better just from memorization. I like the random uh, test because I can't really cheat the system too much that way. So I learn and from my mistakes on my exam, and, and I think that's really attributed to my success passing uh, both my exams on my first try. But if you found this information useful, do me a favor, like the video. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. I want to help grow the channel so more people can see content like this. So I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. And then also subscribe for new Salesforce content. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my video, and I will see you in the next one.